Hey, what's up, everybody? It's time for another quarantine show. We've got somebody, though, that's not stuck right now inside. It's good to see Caleb Joseph. And Caleb, you, you're going to show us the man that's right next to you. we got two great bass socks with us. There's Corbin. We, <laughs> what's up, Corbin? How's it going? How's it going? It's so great to see you guys, and we're so great to have you with us here today. Of course, this is my name is Adam. Adrian with us again. And this is our AA Quarantine Podcast Zoom show. And, uh, man, how are you guys doing? How are you, Caleb? Hey, Caleb. We're doing well. We're staying busy here in Tennessee. My brother and I, we're doing a lot of landscaping and giving uh, yards makeovers and doing some grass cutting and all kinds of different odd jobs, just trying to stay busy and bring in a little income. Tell us about this hat. <laughs> well, it has the the little – kind of cape or whatever you want to call it and on the back you know we we pretty much stay outside from sun up to sundown and it's uh it's really nice weather out here in tennessee right now the heat hasn't really kicked in but the sun is uh for free so <laughs> it's uh being outside as long as we are we don't want to get that leather neck so i've got this little 12 dollar amazon hat and uh keeping my neck from, from getting absolutely uh, burnt to a crisp. So we were talking about uh, baseball in the last couple of days and uh, your experience at the Bay Sox. And there's so many stories, Adam and I really aren't even sure where to begin, but I have two. The first one I want to bring up was uh, May of 2011. An 18 inning game that we've uh, called 18 enough that we'll never forget. My dad was visiting from New Jersey, was in the press box with me from like the 13th inning on because I was his ride home. And uh, if you just want to tell us a little bit about that experience, because I know what it was like announcing for five hours and 27 minutes, no voice left, needed to go to the bathroom, but you're a catcher. So please describe what that was like for you. Right. It was, oh man, it was exhausting. We had, we played two games in one day. It was pretty right. unbelievable. Um, I I just remember feeling like Kirk Gibson when I hit that home run in the 18th inning to walk it off. Um, when he's just kind of limping around the bases, can barely move. I, I, I felt like 10 men running around without any oil in the joints. So it was really good to finally – hit that home run and and put the game away because that we were so ready to be done. And I know the guys on the other team were ready to be done too. We were we were excited for that to be over with, but cool to be a part of a Bay Sox history. When we were in the press box, we are supposed to stay quiet. We all <laughs> screamed our heads off. I mean, we were, it was an exciting night just to be getting to go, to get out of there. Another night, and again, like I said, there were so many. Um, but experience, you got kicked out of a game, and I'm sure there was more than one that you got kicked out. But this particular <laughs> game, uh, several of our fans heard you called the umpire Humpty Dumpty, and our music guy, Lee Devereaux, played the Humpty Dance song and got in trouble for it. But uh, we can't hear everything you said, but I don't know if you remember that day, but I thought it was very clever what you were calling him. Yeah, very much so. I, I actually sent a picture of me arguing with the first base umpire to a friend about a week ago for some, uh, some somehow I stumbled across it and asked uh, him if he remembered that and sure enough that brought back a lot of great memories that that's the one and only time I've ever been ejected out of a game oh um, I did not know that yeah so in in Boston when Gosman hit I think it was Xander Bogart's 2017 or 18 maybe and it became a big ordeal uh, when he got ejected from the game in like the second inning. I don't know if you remember this. Orioles fans will probably remember. I, I went irate on uh, Sam Holbrook, the home plate umpire, and I thought for sure I was going to get ejected, but I, I, I didn't. So getting back to like your first question, yeah. He he had hosed me, this, this, uh, this umpire who was probably not the best um, and had a – figure shaped sort of like Humpty Dumpty shape. He, he had hosed, he had hosed me on a strike three call four or five inches outside. I, you know, whatever. I mean, 
it happens. But then I remember being in the dugout and watching Brandon Waring just getting hosed as well. And it wasn't necessarily me. It was Waring getting hosed because he's one of the most respected guys on our team. That's what fired me up, and I just let him have it. I let that umpire have it. I said, come on, Humpty Dumpty, open your eyes. And, I mean, in one second, the first base umpire ejects me. And I'm going, hold on, wait, what? I didn't say it to you. I said that to the home plate umpire. So then I hop over the I hop over the rail and you know give my best '80s manager impersonation, you know those <laughs> guys like Bobby Cox and throwing the hat or whatever. And I told that first base umpire, I said, "Keep your rabbit ears out of here," you know. And I was <laughs> I was trying to pull all the stops on him, thinking I was cool. But the one thing that I remember about that more than anything was I. Uh, I, I was in big trouble that night with my wife. We had just gotten married, and uh, <laughs> she said, if you ever do something like that again and embarrass me like that, I'm never coming to a baseball game ever again. So <laughs> to this day, I haven't been ejected, so I've, I've, I've kept my end of the bargain. Caleb, 2013, man. I mean, you, you were in Bowie, obviously, four seasons, and it, that can be tough if you kind of get stuck at a level, and I know you were contemplating – you know, what was next in your life, not necessarily even in terms of baseball after 2012. Tell us about the refocusing, the coming back, your dominant 2013, which really, to be honest, has probably sparked a career that continues to this day. Yeah, I think you're right, Adam. I, without 2013, I'm not sure that 14 would have been available. We're trying to back a trailer up, guys, so if you hear that beeping noise, <laughs> It's telling us to watch out. We're about to hit a kid or two. No, um, I, I, I'm not sure I would have made it if I didn't have that season and been in a spot to be kind of called up. I, I just – I've been chasing that season and results since then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, it, was, it was just – it was arguably the best season of my life. I don't I, – I, I remember having an incredibly – strict routine and Butch Davis was great that year he just kind of let me be and I just kind of got hot and really never cooled down like I said I've I've never been able to do that again but uh it was magical I mean it's hit 22 home runs drove in 97 it was uh it was an awesome year we had a really good team I had a lot of guys to to drive in tons of opportunities. It was great. I mean, I, if I'll tell you what, baseball is super fun when you have years like that. <laughs> no doubt. I got to ask Corbin a question now because right. I'm putting you on the spot here, Corbin, but it's amazing. Right. The Orioles is an organization known for brothers, you know, Cal and Lee, and of course, even now with the Bay Sox, I know Buck Britton never played in the major leagues like you guys did with the Orioles, but, uh, but Buck Britton, Zach Britton, of course, Picarellas, we had a lot. Uh, to, to the Orioles, and you got to tell the Gary Kendall story because Gary used to always say that, you know, everybody's got to be able to bunt. When you get to the major leagues, you're not going to be at the top of the order, you know, no matter if you're in the Sox order, and you got to tell him otherwise. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, you know, uh, me and Gary, we, we, had a, we had an awesome relationship, you know, and, and he would always, you know, ask me to, you know, put the sign on the bunt, not always step out and look at him like, are you, are you serious? There's a guy at second base, I know, but I can drive him in. You know, and of course, I laid the bunt down or whatever. And then one time, you know, I, I was I was hot and he gave me the bunt sign. I did my normal, stepped out, looked at him, got back in the box, ended up hitting the ball in the gap, you know, scoring that run. And after the game, he brought me in. He said, he, that's when he started calling me hot shot. You know, hey, hot shot, come here. <laughs> you know, we had, a, we had a couple of talks and and uh, I know one time I had the bases loaded one time, and I, I was feeling pretty good with the base socks. And I tried to lay down a bunt, like a little drag bunt. And ever since, ever since then, he was like, uh, what, "What are you doing? The bases are loaded." I said, "I got an RBI." He said, "Well, I want to get three RBIs. You know, hit a double in the gap, score all of them. You know, come on, what are you doing?" And uh, but Gary was always uh, always brought a smile to my face. He's uh, he's a great man, and uh, you know, awesome to play for. And then, of course, you get called up to the major leagues, and right. you got to give it back to him because the first day that you played with the Orioles, you were batting at the top. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. 
Yeah, Gary. Yeah, he, he told me, hey, you know, you're gonna have to, you're gonna be a, you're gonna be an eight nine, you know, guy when you get called up. Day one, when I got called up with the Orioles, I was leading off, you know, playing playing second base or yeah, just playing first base, just you know, just enjoying every minute of it, you know. So I texted him. I said, hey, uh, I don't know if you saw the uh, the box score, but I was leading off, Gary. I, I wasn't <laughs> eight or nine. I was in the one hole. <laughs> So, uh, it was fun, fun times. It was good. So, you know, we got you. I'm going to put you on the spot before we get back to Caleb for a quick question. Okay. And we've yeah. been doing this game called uh, Rapid Fire. So, okay. instead of uh, Caleb, I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, Adam's going to pull up a little timer for about 30 seconds and just give me the either or. And uh, here, here goes a Rapid Fire. Timberlake or Jay-Z? Ooh, uh, Timberlake. Steak or seafood? Steak. Vanilla or chocolate? Chocolate. Beach or mountains? Oh, mountains. Mexican or Italian? Either. <laughs> Neither. Neither. <laughs> Swim with alligators or sharks? Ooh, I'll go, uh, I'll do alligators. Freeze time or travel? Say yeah. travel. College football or NFL? NFL. Hockey or soccer? Hockey. Final question, would you rather fight a bear or a lion? <laughs> That's probably sad. I'd probably take down the lion. I don't know about the bear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Caleb, who would you take down, the lion or the bear? Oh, they're, I'm pretty much screwed in both situations, but I have my best chance is probably against a bear. I've, those lions, oh, my goodness. We went, we, you know, I got five- and two-year-old kids now. They mm -hmm. love going to the zoo. And I've seen a couple bears here in my life, but I'm, you know, seeing those lions every time we go to the zoo, they're, they're scary. <laughs> scary. So I'm going to put you on the spot, Caleb. You've been known, uh, Jason Gurka and a few other birdies have told me about your amazing seeing capabilities. Now, I realize you don't have the shower <coughs> ambiance, but if you could give me two lines from any song, I'd love to hear that voice. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, I'll give it to you. It's, it's very nerve wracking. Just want so if you don't get Take my a deep breath. This is a famous Spanish song I learned when I was in Spanish class in middle school. The singer's <laughs> name is Luis Miguel, but I'll just sing two lines of the chorus. Entonces lloraré la media vuelta y me iré con el sol cuando muera la tarde. Te vas porque yo quiero que te vayas. And that's it. That's all I yes. got. Yes. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> love it. Love it. Uh, imagine I'm in the shower and I really let it go. It gets uh, gets loud. I, that's what I was known for. I was known for trying to annoy Gary Kendall all the way in his <laughs> office from the shower. To, uh, make Were you sure successful? Knew. I'm sorry. Were you successful? Was he hearing you? Oh something? yeah, yeah. He'd come in there. What's that noise? Hey, cut that out, man. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, guys, he's, he's he's one of a kind. Yes, he is. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you guys so much for doing this. We really appreciate it, Caleb and Corbin. Thank you, Corbin. Yeah, you got it. You got it. You guys are, you know, we miss you. We miss you and Bowie. That's right. Well, we uh, we have uh, mixed feelings about missing y'all. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, we, we miss you, but, you know, it probably means we're doing – we're at the next level, and that's – we want to be at the next level. So That's right. We, <laughs> we do – there will always be a special place in our heart. For the Bowie Bay Sox. That's right. That's no right. Doubt. And and we enjoyed our time with Baltimore. I mean, not many brothers can say they played in the big leagues at the same time, much less on the same team. Baltimore gave us that opportunity. And I don't wanna I don't wanna create any any optimism that's unneeded, but the Joseph brothers may find their way back in some form or fashion to the Orioles organization. We'll see. Who knows? Who knows? We may be managing the Bay Sox one day. You never know. <laughs> that, that would be, would be a beautiful fantastic. thing. <laughs> I can tell you one thing. I'll be able to do the Louie dance in the seventh <laughs> inning. I can, you know, it's been a couple of years, but I could, I could still probably do it right now. I'm going to have that written down. So if that ever does occur, 
you're on the spot. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Great fellas. We really guys. appreciate it. You got it. See ya. See ya.